Hi, my name is Jen Reed, and I'm a project-based learning coach at the Dayton Regional STEM School. And I'm Erin Lucas, and I teach um, seventh and eighth grade science at the Dayton Regional STEM School. So Erin, why don't you tell us a little bit about what has been working for you as we've been doing distance learning for the last five or so weeks? So um, the journey to getting to where I am now um, has been kind of long, but what I ultimately decided to do was to create screencast videos that were similar to the format of a lesson in our inquiry science curriculum, um, which we use iQuest. And so I've been taking um, those lessons and screencasting myself in PowerPoint, um, starting with some kind of phenomena, and then um, they make predictions, and the way that they do that is I embed the video into Edpuzzle, and in Edpuzzle, you can embed questions along the way. And so then once they've made their predictions in the Edpuzzle video, then I show them a bunch of evidence um, that helps explain that phenomena. And the evidence can be things like videos that I've recorded around my house. I brought home a lot of my stuff from my lab at school and I'm like recording myself interacting with some of the tools and materials that they would have interacted with at school. And so I'm showing those videos to them. Um, something I've done recently is I've had kids submit videos to me of things that I would have had them do in the classrooms. So I made this whole list of things that I thought kids could record at home and I posted it on our, um, our learner management system Schoology and I was like, hey, does anybody wanna send me a video of them doing any of these things? And so I've had kids sending things in and I've been adding them into the screencast videos now. So it's a little more um, interactive with the kids and they can like see themselves in the video. For those who want to engage a little bit more, they have that opportunity. In Edpuzzle, I can embed multiple choice questions also. And so later in the video, I start adding in more and more multiple choice questions to check for understanding. And also to check at for, to make sure that they're paying attention during the video and not just like letting it play. I think that like, the feedback I've gotten from kids, I did a survey about halfway through this um, online learning time, and the, the feedback I got was it feels um, a little bit like science class. Mm -hmm. And so that, that made me feel good. I was like, that's, that's the ultimate goal, is that it feels a little bit like the way we interact in science class. Okay, so here's like an example of one that I did uh, this past week. Hello, eighth graders. We're back for another fun-filled lesson on forces. So in order to be prepared for today's lesson on friction and homework 5.1, these are the things that you need to have ready. So go ahead and read through that list and pause the video if you need to. I've got like a list of our updating them on the scientific principles we have. All right, the first thing you're going to do today is add another scientific principle to the scientific principles list, number six. Um, but one of the and then here's like an example where I've embedded video of, of me surface. doing something. This is like part of like the evidence building section of the lesson. I have these two foam pieces, and they have a, a smooth side and a rough side. So you can see. Here, they slide past each other pretty easily because they're pretty smooth, but when I flip them over to the jagged edges, those jagged edges get caught, and so that's definitely going to increase the amount of friction between them. I take screenshots or embed like interactives in a PowerPoint, or I'll link to things. Even books have jagged edges, and when those books are sliding against each other, um, the molecules that make up those two books are going to be moving past each other and bumping into each other. If they're, if they're not touching each other, we don't have any friction. But once they come into contact the, with each other, the molecules between the two books start bumping into each other and moving the molecules around. And something you might notice right here happening is that the temperature is going up. In Edpuzzle, you can add in all these questions. So these are like, here's an example of a, a multiple choice question to check for understanding. This is an example of those videos that kids have been sending in to me. Across your floor without socks on. It doesn't work very well. But if you add socks to your feet, 
that reduces the friction a lot. It really smooths out those services. At the end of watching this video, I get a, a report for each kid of what percentage of the video they watched, what their score was on the multiple choice questions, and then I can assign points to the open response questions. Um, and for prediction questions, I'm just giving them full credit just for answering it okay. um, with something that is logical. But the last question in every video is, what questions do you have after watching this video? And um, those are the questions that I use when I'm going into the next lesson. And I'll say like, a lot of you are asking questions about what it would be like, what, what the, the free body diagram would look like if the um, object was moving at a constant speed. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And then afterwards, I'll do like a Kahoot game or a quiz in Schoology that they can take over and over again. Okay. And I'm not like giving them a score based on their first try. So I just feel like it's not fair right now to be holding them accountable for um, something that would be similar to like a, a, a summative quiz or test. I just feel like that's not really fair right now um, with so many kids in different situations. So in terms of assessment, I've been doing things that students can like repeat and retake and try to like earn the highest score possible. I just feel like there's enough students that are in a situation where you know their parents are essential workers and they're watching their siblings during the day or their parents have are sick or um, they've got you know inconsistent internet or something like that um, and I just feel like there's enough students in that situation that I, I really want it to be fair but I want it to be as close to like our classroom experience as possible and I'm just trying to be really flexible with deadlines with the students that need it and just understanding that like my science lesson is maybe not the most important thing in their life right now. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Erin, for sharing your process with us and your thinking during this strange time of teaching. It sounds like you're really putting in a lot of effort to give your kids the consistency that they need, but also deliver some really rich learning experiences for them. No problem. Thank you. You're welcome.